Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Junior Coders. Uh, yeah, the v previous video, by the way, was created not by me, but by another crew member of the YouTube channel called Tech Ninja. And he's a really great person, by the way, and he created such an amazing video. Also, it just is the number one respect uh, in, according to views. By the way, you can also watch this video. I'll put a card on top and, uh, and also the video. Uh, link in the description below so that you can watch this uh, video. It's really amazing. It's how you can create a Jarvis artificial intelligence assistance in Python. So if that's what you're interested in, then you can click wherever you, know, you feel like. For now, let's get back into the video. In today's video, if you have already seen the title, we're going to be converting an exe file, I'm extremely sorry, from a jar file to an exe file and then back to an installer. So, if you want to create this Java file, if you don't know basically what a jar file is, I would recommend checking a uh, Java forum uh, from the Oracle uh, website. They have a few, you know, the descriptive uh, just talks about what a jar file really is. You can check that out. For now, I'm just going to assume that you know what a jar file is and what it can do. Basically, first you have to check whether your program is runnable or not. This project is what I'm going to convert to jar right now. And this is basically a runnable jar file. This is a game which I created called Checkword. And a really great game, by the way. It's a puzzle game that you can play. I'm not going to be spoiling much. Also, if you want to download the game, you can download the game from Checkword desktop over here. Links will be in the description to where you can actually check that out, okay? And this idea is also taken from this video game called One Action Heroes, which is basically a game jam game. Also, link will, uh, that will be in the description so that you can check that out. Alright? Now let's get back into the video. So, to take this and turn it into an executable jar file, you need to right click on your project, go to export. Yep. And then under here, go down to Java folder and click on runnable jar file. And here, select the main class from it's already selected and select the export destination of your jar file for me it's already there and then click on finish it already exists you want to override it I want to override it so if you go back to your file and you go back to the place where your jar file is you copy the file and then you create a new folder I already have a new folder what this folder is I'll explain really shortly okay so this is uh, this is basically the folder which is required to create from a jar to an ext. What this is, is the JRE. Why do we need this? Well, to convert from a jar to an ext, we're going to use a program which is Launch4j. Launch4j is a app, is a Java executable wrapper. It basically creates into an ext file, but your dependencies which you use in Java those are not stored in the jar file but those are not also stored in the exe file basically what you do is that it redirects the dependencies which you use onto a different folder for us those dependencies are right in this folder so how to actually copy and paste those dependencies program files java and go to jre maybe you can also go to jdk but jre and you can copy the bin and library not the legal one that's not required and you can copy it and then you can paste it over there like that you basically create a new folder called jre and then inside put it over here all right so one more thing that i've noticed is that if i run this exe file it runs as normal but, uh, i'm extremely sorry not an exe a jar file it runs like normal but the assets are not there so we need to import the assets now to import the assets you have to basically redirect to your folder uh, to your project directory go to your project copy the file and then go to your pro folder where you want to uh, change from jar to exe and paste it here so if you now run this there you the assets are there all right so now how do we convert that to the exe well first install the launch uh, launch 4j so how do we install launch 4j downloads Go to uh, this button right here, and here, click on the download latest version if you're on a Windows, or if you're on a Mac, it basically auto-corrects by itself. 
And once you install it, I already installed it. You can download the installer and then you can do whatever you want to do with it. Once it's installed, you can launch it from the start menu. Launch 4J 3.12. Let's see. So what you want to do here is a few things. Firstly, go to basic. Now, in the jar, you have to mention the directory of your jar file. Click on this folder. Select your jar file. Click open. If you have an icon, click on this folder. For now, you don't have it. Next, go to class path. Custom class path. Click over here. Select the jar file. This automatically gets your main class. Next, go to GRE. Here, type in GRE. But basically, the folder where you build your bin and live. Next, go to min GRE version. Type 1.8. Or the GRE version that you're using. Next, click on the 64 bit. And that's everything. A few things you're going to do is enable splash screen, which basically you have to have a .bmp file image. Next is version info. You can add version info of your own. Next is messages. If some error happens, the messages will pop. Some messages will pop up, and you can add custom messages as well. For now, this is enough. Now click on the output file and click on its folder. Here, type the name of your .exe file and make sure to add the .exe at the last. Save. And now, click on this gear icon, which is the build wrapper icon. Next, you have to ha also have a config file, which is an XML or CFG. I'm just going to call this config file. Hit save. And then, it successfully created an .exe file for us. So if you run this, there you go. Now, you can close launch.4j. Next is we're going to be creating this exe file and wrapping it all over into a installer. For that first, create a new folder, name it anything you want, take all the stuff, cut it, and inside the stuff folder, paste it. I'll be explaining why shortly. Next, go to the fourth link in the description to Inno Setup. Here you can click on download Inno Setup. Now this is basically a program which helps us to create installers. I would recommend having this, the latest version, and clicking on the US download site. So after you do that, you can run this from the uh, start menu. Uh, it is, you know, set compiler. Now you can click on cancel, and here you can click on new main script or control N. Welcome to the Inno Setup Script Wizard. Here is where you create your installer for the program. Click next, write your application name. Write your application web uh, version. Write your company publisher. Write your application website. For this, I'm going to be going to my ish.io page and pasting it over there. Next, select your destination based folder. For me, it's going to be program files. Next, application folder name. It's going to be check word itself. Next, select your main executable file. For this, you go to your executable file, obviously. Other application files, here you can add the folder and then redirect to your stuff folder which is over here. Now the reason why I put it inside a stuff folder is that if I were not to add inside a stuff folder and add the folders then whenever it'll extract those into your program files it's not going to be extracting them properly. It's going to be extracting the things within the folder but not the folder itself. So we need this folder so that when it'll extract, it'll extract the folders within this folder and hence you know save us from disaster. Now Include all the subfolders, click on next. Application file name, you can call this check word setup file, application file type extender, MYP. This one, you can keep it as you want to do. As you want to do, you can either create a shortcut or you can have a folder within the start menu. License file, information file shown after installation, information file after installation. If you have, you can specify those. But for, uh, for, but for this episode, we don't have any. Next. Install mode. Administrative install mode is recommended, but if you want to do, you can also have a non-administrative install mode. I'm going to be going in administrative. Next, select your languages. For this one, for demonstration, I'm going to be using English and Russian. Next, custom compiler output mode. Here, you basically have to give the name. Uh, basically, you have to specify the folder where you're going to be having the installer set up. I have a different folder, and I'm going to be redirecting it to that. Compiler setup base name, 
If you have a custom set of icon files, you can add it. And if you have a custom password, set of password, you can add it. For me, it's going to be hello world, just for demonstration purposes. Next, in our set of preprocessor, yes, you can define compiler directives. Just leave it as it is. Next, now you've successfully compiled the Inno setup wizard. If you want to uh, create your new, generate your new script file, click finish. I'm going to click on finish, and now it's going to be creating our installer file. Finish. Would you like to compile your new script now? Yes. Would you like to save your script before compiling? Obviously, yes. And here, we be saving our setup scripts. It's going to be dictionary save, and this is going to take some time for the uh, setup. And I'm going to be returning when it's done. All right, so it is now right now finished. Right now, you can close out of this. And now, if you check in your checkboard output, there you go. You have the installer. Now, trust me, it definitely works. The installer definitely should work. Right now, I'm not going to be showing it in the demo. You can uh, run this program, and then you can check if your installer works or not. Because I am on a time crunch, and I need to shorten this video. So that is pretty much it for this episode. If you like what you have seen, please, you know, click on the thumbs up button in the, in the, just above the description, but below the video. Also, if you enjoyed this and you want to check in on further episodes, click on the subscribe button so that you never miss any of them. And also, just again, you can check out Tech Ninja's video on creating a Jarvis artificial intelligence assistance in Python if you really enjoyed. He has until uh, now uploaded the first part, the second part is coming real soon, so stay tuned for that. And with that being said, thank you very much guys for watching this video, you guys are awesome.